At this time, we'll stand. Andy will lead us in our scripture and prayer. Good morning. This morning's scriptures will be coming from Psalms, chapter 42. I'll be reading from the NIV Bible. Psalms 42, verses 1 through 5. As the deer paints for streams of water, so my soul paints for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us the want to to be out here in your house this morning. Father, we pray that you bless each and every one of us here, the ones that couldn't be here. Father, we ask you to bless this great nation that we live in, bless the leaders from the very highest all the way down to the lowest. We pray for all the Christians in the world, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to give us all the faith to overcome the doubt, the unbelief, and the fear that creeps into our hearts and our minds at times. Father, we ask you, Lord, to just be with each and every one of us. Let us be the examples that we need to be to encourage people that we come across with in this coming week and all times, Lord, that, that doesn't know you as our personal Savior. Father, we pray that as the, these diseases and viruses and plagues and all these different uh, horrible stuff that's going on in our country, our nation, Lord, that you bring it to end for us. Father, we ask you to bless all of our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whatever the case may be, as well as all of our family members. We all need some sort of a blessing, Lord, whether it be a healing, a physical, mental, spiritual, emotionally, whatever it may be. Father, we just want to praise you and thank you for your grace and mercy and pardon that you pour out on each and every one of us. We ask you, Lord, to bless our church here at Sharondale, the leaders here. Lord, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes for the church leaders in all churches, Lord, that a lot of us don't realize what goes on, the stress, the pressure. I ask you, Lord, a special blessing for all of them. The sick list is, is running longer and longer, it seems like. We ask a blessing, uh, you bless each and every one of the names that's been mentioned, the ones we forgot to mention. And again, Lord, we all need some sort of a blessing. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, and we thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy and your pardon that you just pour out on each and every one of us all the time. All these things we ask for, and we thank you for them in the name of our personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. be singing our first hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, the first and last stanzas of this hymn. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms, what a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, 
leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm going to prepare for our communion now. We'll be singing Breaking of Bread, the first and last verses. If there's anybody here who has not gotten your communion kit and wishes to partake this morning, please raise your hand and you will be brought that kit at this time. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we break the bread in memory of that great sacrifice on Calvary. This we do each Lord's day as Christ has said. Bless all disciples now who break the bread. Let's do the second stanza. Bless thou the cup, dear Lord, to us this day. May we with hearts prepared his word obey. We now his death proclaim in his own way until he comes again we keep this day good morning Go ahead and uh, take your communion out of the out of the baggie at this time and hold it in readiness. This morning, uh, the meditation I'm going to be talking about. Melchizedek and I didn't realize it until I started studying for this that when he met Abraham uh, he brought bread and wine we read about Melchizedek beginning in uh, Genesis chapter 14 starting with verse 18 and then uh, he's not spoken about again until uh, Hebrews chapter 7. He's a figure of mystery. Some say he is the pre-incarnate Christ. Others take him at face value. He is the king of Salem, which means peace. The theories abound, but we may note two things about him. He greets Abraham with bread and wine, the same elements used in Passover and in the Lord's Supper. Abraham ties to him, thus marking him as superior. The events then seem to disappear. There is no mention of Melchizedek in the, in the scripture until about a thousand years pass when he is mentioned in one of the prophetic Psalms. The explanation such as we have is found in the book of Hebrews. So it seems that he remains a mystery until you consider what happens next. The chapter divisions don't do much, don't help us much here. For the very next thing to happen to Abraham is that God establishes his co covenant with him. It is a covenant of promise and prophecy. The promise, he promises Abraham three things. 
God will be his shield and reward. Protection from evil and reward for righteousness will come from God. Despite his age, about 99, he and his wife will have a son. This, of course, is Isaac. His descendants will be as numerous as the stars. There is prophecy also. His descendants will return to the land of Canaan in four generations because of the sins of the Amorites. His descendants will be enslaved for 400 years, but at the end of that time, God will lead them out of slavery into the promised land. Then there is the land. A large section of the Middle East is promised to his descendants. Is there a connection? It seems so. For the bread and wine mediate two more covenants, the one with Moses and the one from the Messiah. It seems God has a menu for the occasion. He also insists upon a priest, evidently. Abraham had Melchizedek, Moses had Aaron, and we have Christ. What does a priest do? May I suggest these three things? The priest intercedes, speaking on behalf of the others to Almighty God. He also is to bring God's will to man so that we might learn obedience to God. And the priest is empowered to pronounce God's blessings upon us. Your priest, or our priest, Christ, does all this and more. The name of Melchizedek did not vanish with Abraham. In David's time, his name is recalled so that we might understand that Christ is our high priest. This priesthood was, brought, was bought with a price at Calvary. What he paid, we could not. Let us remember his intercession for us in these simple elements used by Melchizedek so long ago. As we partake of the bread and the cup this morning, let us remember Jesus and his, he is our high priest. He is a prophet, priest, and king. He is our savior. He gave his life for us upon the cross. Let us always remember Jesus, what he's done and what he means to each and every one of us. Let us expose the bread. Let us pray. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Father, for the day and thankful, Father, for our lives and our health and our strength. Thankful, Father, for the desire to be here in your house this morning, to be together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, it is Christ who brings us here this morning, our faith in him and in you. And God, as we partake of the communion this morning, I pray that we do remember Jesus giving his life upon the cross for us. Bless the bread representing Jesus' body to know the pain and suffering that he endured for each and every one of us. Let us now partake of the bread. And Father, as we continue in prayer, may we recognize the cup as being the blood of Jesus that was shed upon the cross that day. From the whipping that he took that ripped the flesh from his body, a crown of thorns forced upon his head, nails that pierced his hands and his feet, and a spear thrust in his side. Father, as he hung there, he was asking for intercession for all those that had put him there. And today he is at your right hand making intercession for us as well. God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for him being our atoning sacrifice that we could enter into the kingdom and be 
one of your children and to know, Father, that once this life is over, that we will be with the Master, the King, our Creator. Let us now partake of the cup. And Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. You have blessed us all in so many ways. May we always recognize the blessings you give us, be thankful for them. But most of all, may we be thankful for your Son and our Savior. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.